funny that I should be thinking about religious intolerance in the United States. And I'm sitting here in my home in New Delhi, listening to the call to prayer. It's uh, one o'clock, and the mosque over there will be calling to prayer. Um, a few minutes later, you'll hear the one over here calling to prayer, and there are some other uh, temples, uh, Hindu temples here. These two mosques delay so that they don't compete. I guess I should come clear uh, with who I am uh, and uh, what my sort of religious background is, because I'm sure uh, plenty of you are wondering, you know, who is this guy to even be talking about this? I'm a person who grew up uh, in the Bible Belt. I didn't realize it at the time because it was where I grew up. Uh, and it was what I knew. And this meant that, for example, my grandparents uh, helped found a church, uh, a Christian church, a Baptist church, that stood uh, next to, across from, down the street from many, many, many other uh, denominations of uh, black Christians, you know, Pentecostals, many Baptists. Um, I mean, I'm talking about like churches, you know, like building churches, you know. Um, the Holiness Church. I knew some people I went to school with uh, who went to that church. And, well, you you know, everybody goes to a different church uh, in the community. And so this is even how you ask people, oh, you know, what church you, you know, what church you belong to? What church do you belong to? Is often a way that people even identify people. There are huge, there's a huge mega church in my city. Uh, and these are just black churches on the west end of Louisville. There are just like churches everywhere. Fortunately, I can proudly say that there are more churches in West End Louisville than there are uh, liquor stores. I grew up in a Buddhist community, which meant that my religious community was is um, cross-class and cross-racial, which was quite unique, um, which is quite unique, it seems, in America. We're still segregated. It's Sunday. It won. And you see that this place is segregated too. And there you will see it. But the question becomes, how do we live together? So let me just give you some examples of uh, living as a minority in a Christian society. Um, I was called a witch in the seventh grade by someone who was a heathen. I was um, but she was a certain, you know, she was a, a certified, you know, heathen. Um, I sat with my, well, there were Jews in our school, um, and we, we the, the Christian music teacher taught us Hanukkah songs and, you know, Christian uh, Christmas songs so that we could so-called celebrate uh, winter. These are beautiful experiences, though. I mean, I love um, the ethos of Christmas, the ethos of the winter celebration. And so it isn't to say that we shouldn't celebrate it. I mean, my school transformed and it was a place of fellowship. And so as a non-Christian, uh, seeing seeing this religious ceremony, religious celebration become secular, and incorporate all of us through school. And so, you know, clearly people say that America is secular. No, it's not. It's Christian. Um, and it's not just the fundamentalists who are saying it. I mean, look, at this is a public school and everybody's celebrating Christmas. Like, I'm talking about, like, the school transformed. Now, what it transformed into was awesome. It was a, it was sincerely a place of fellowship and it wasn't just one day of the week or one day of the year I mean it built up through you know through Hanukkah through um, decorating the school through um, I mean you used to see Santa Claus everywhere or we we you know we have a secret Santa where you can you pick you know names out of a hat and exchange gifts I mean the ritual of Christmas Christianizing uh, is just there it's a part of who we are in America. Now we do celebrate other things, and we might even learn about other celebrations, or have some token like the the, the American school here, or have some like international food fair, where like everybody's parents like cooks their food and brings it. Um, 
while those attempts are cute, it still masks the idea of who we are fundamentally as Americans. And until we can talk about our diversity, um, we will never really see how, well, A, we'll never really be aware of our own culture, that we do have a culture. It's not just that there are all the subcultures of Americans and the regionalism of America. So to talk about who we are um, and cultural values that, of course, then get translated into uh, political values and e economic values, um, all under the guise of being secular and free market, um, we never really get to talk about what that means. You know, what does that mean in practice? What that means in practice is how do we live with difference? It's not just that, you know, we have elections for the most popular candidate and so the majority will always win. No. It's more of how, what is the dialogue that we have across communities and as individuals? And of course, school is one of the only places that are that can be, it has the potential to really bring together different types of people in our very socially segregated societies. Again, um, you know, I come from a typical kind of American city that's shaped like a grid, um, has a river running running over it, but you can literally map a, uh, a race uh, and class. Um, you can, it maps out literally topograph topographically over the city. Um, which is common. So we're, we're segregated. It's not just that we're segregated right now on Sunday morning, um, but we're segregated in ways we worship. And you're saying, should I force integration? Should people force, force, force? Well, for school, yes, because this is the place of dialogue. This is the place where we value knowledge and value each other. So what is it? We have to make school pluralistic. And I'm not uh, saying that there aren't schools that make great efforts at it, but we really have to understand that until we really live together, until we know each other intimately and grow up together, we will never sort of reach the pluralistic sort of society um, that isn't ridden with the sort of dominance of a majority over a more minority or an elite minority over a, an oppressed majority, which is what you find here in India, which is... Um, the Obama effect always has to come up in these sorts of conversations because the question always is, who is this guy who crosses all these lines? Is he Muslim? Another way that you learn uh, what it means to be Christian or not Christian in America. Just just asking, is someone in his distant past Muslim raises such suspicion about a person in America? Asking such a question, see, it's, it seems so harmless. We're so harmless. <laughs> We're just asking. That's a, the, it, it's very evocative of the kind of religious prejudice that we live with that, that's quiet, silent in American life. And, and, and we can still talk about how tolerant we are because look, we're not the Taliban and look, we're not, you know, this is not Iran. Well, I understand that. It's not, and I'm appreciative of that. And because it's not those places, but also to encourage, you know, dialogue in um, from those places, because people surely now in Iran um, can tweet and put videos on YouTube and we can get to know what they think. And so we don't have to live in our own boxes like, you know, many people do in America this Sunday. No, I don't think that people should be forced to um, be bused from church to church. But I do think that we have to say there should be communities that have interfaith dialogues, for example, of, of, of saying that faith is important to us. And so when we have someone, um, Yves Patel, for example, um, who's in the president's cabinet, that we have open and honest dialogue about religion, but it also has to be in the schools. So yes, it needs to be on the national level, but we have to also have these dialogues in the schools. And as it is now, it's very Christian supremacist. I'm not saying that those things are necessarily bad. Like the fellowship at Christmas in schools is, is wonderful. But we then have to look at ways of being inclusive of difference. And that's just a conversation that's just beginning. That's a whole different conversation, what it means to be inclusive.